Hey everybody, welcome to part two of the 528 Gen 2 Hemi build. In part one, I disassembled the short block, kind of did a quick visual inspection of everything and got a base plan of what the uh, what my plan is moving forward with this engine. Today, I'm gonna start checking bearing clearances. I'm gonna look at the bearings, figure out you know what we got, what kind of alloy they are, and we'll check housing clearance, bearing clearance, and then as well, go through the cylinder heads and valve train, make sure our spring pressures look good, make sure the valve check is good, as far as how the valves seal up to the valve seats, and um, start proofing everything and make sure everything looks good to go. Okay, I got everything out of the short block cleaned up and ready to start checking things. On the connecting rods, I'm gonna retorque the caps, re-lubricate the bolts and check the housing bores. I'm gonna do the same with the main caps on the engine block. It does have studs and whenever you switch a block to studs, you need to line hone the block because the stud has extra clamping force. It's gonna distort that circular bore where the main bearings go. So check to see if these are done. Um, well, also while I was inside cleaning everything, it has Clevite P-Series bearings. And these are good bearings, don't get me wrong, but they're really intended for stock rebuild applications, not 528 cubic inch, potentially 650, 700 horsepower stroker engines. So I'm gonna change those to a stronger bearing. The rod bearings were fine, they're a king bearing. I like those, I'm a big fan. And then I'm also going to start checking ring gap on the bores. And then because I'm going to reuse these rod bearings, I can go ahead and check rod bearing clearance. I got to wait for the main bearings to come in before checking bearing clearance on the mains. And then we'll finish it off by making sure the pistons fit the bores correctly and they're not too tight, too loose, or anything that might cause us some problems.
All right, so what's happening right now is these are ARP half inch main studs, which get torqued to 110 foot pounds. However, right now, as soon as they approach 95 to 100, they stop increasing torque and the bolt is yielding or the stud is yielding, meaning it can't tighten up the rest of the way. That one did it at 90 and it, it climbs from 60, 70, 80, and then instead of the torque going up to 110, it levels out and it goes flat and it keeps pulling at 90 to 100 pounds, even though I'm still adding degrees of torque to the stud. So that means these studs have either been over torqued at some point in their life. Um, if they were torqued to 130 pounds, for example, they would, that would have yielded the bolt and now that I'm here, I can't get them to torque where they need to be. So, need to get a new set of studs on the way for this block, and then we can try this again. Before I retorque the connecting rods, I'm gonna re-lubricate the bolts so that we get the proper amount of stretch while I torque it, since these have been totally cleaned and whatnot. Okay, good. All of the housing bores are within two tenths of each other, right in the middle of the OEM spec of 2.5 to 2.5005. So put the old bearings back in them. I'm gonna retorque, and then we'll check the bearing clearance against the main journal of the crankshaft. These are the rod bearings that came out of this engine. And what I want you to notice is there is not a mark on them. Well, normally that's a great thing, you know, clean assembly, clean handling. What it also means is that this has never been done. As soon as you run this through a bearing, it's gonna leave the smallest little scribe marks on it. And it's nothing to worry about. It's just kind of part of it when you check bearing clearance. But that's kind of scary that bearings were, at least the rod bearing clearance. Let's look at the mains actually. Nothing. And these bearings are soft enough. Let me grab this one. That with my fingernail, let me scribe it a little bit. 
See all that? That's just with my fingernail, let alone if this comes through. See those little marks? So these bearing clearances were never checked in a 528 cubic inch stroker Hemi. So that being said, I'm gonna put y'all back on the tripod and see what bearing clearances we're getting. All right, that one is beautiful. Okay. Yeah, we're... I've got 2.5 thou clearance, which for this engine is exactly what I wanted. So we got really lucky with the rod bearings, but still, as you guys saw, it doesn't take any time to check your bearing clearance, especially on an engine of this caliber. I'm kind of shocked it was not done. All right. So now if you look, see those two little marks? And they're totally superficial. They're on the surface. I did not scratch the bearing at all, but we know they were never checked before. Now they are, now we know they're good. And these are good to go right back in the engine. Once I get the new main bearings, I'm gonna repeat the same process. Oh, and the new studs. I gotta get new studs ordered for this because these are yielding and I, <laughs> If you keep torquing on them, once they've yielded, it's, they might hit 110 or it might pop or strip. And this being an aftermarket Mopar block, I'm not taking that risk, especially with the horsepower rating. So anyways, I'm gonna get the new parts on, this, on the way and we'll pick up where we left off.